All right, as promised, we are going to be starting on the steering system this week. So I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, I got the bracket on there. Um, I went ahead and turned down some of these same these same ends here that sleeve into the tubing because I'm using three quarter inch tubing. And once this one's in. Okay, so we've got a outer tie rod. Okay, I know I'm gonna have to cut this off and build a kind of a clevis style mount up on the end of the steering rack. So I should be able to cut off just enough of this. Um, you know, that I, enough that I can hold it in the lathe for sure. And uh, then weld some type of a clevis onto here that the eye on this side can hold on to. And yeah, so I'll go back to the lathe again. I'll park this off and then we'll start fabbing up something. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. If you guys are enjoying the content, please hit the like button, subscribe, and share this with some other crazy mechanic friends of yours. And one other note, Kyle, you're from Boosted Lifestyle. Your shirt is in the mail. I hope you enjoy it. So he chose uh, this style. This is the front. And that is the back. But he wanted it in black. So it is in the mail. It's on the way to you. Uh, I hope you enjoy it and continue on with the video. All right. This is the little bracket that I made and I welded it onto the cutoff uh, and this will thread into the steering rack itself. And this allows me to get, you know, a little bit of adjustment on it. Uh, and then my steering arms themselves have a fair bit of adjustment. All right, it's only a mere 12 hours after the last time I saw you guys. Um, no idea what was going on, but it took me forever to actually get this into a spot where I think it's accurate now. Um, and I think the reason is because I have, you know, normally on a double A arm suspension, you'll have two planes. So this will be flat, this will be flat. And these two are in line and those two are in line. I have four planes. Uh, these two are at different heights and different depths away from the rail. And these are at different heights and different depths away from the, the rail as well. So what that is doing is causing really odd bump steer based on mathematically where this should sit. So. Like I said, it's like 12 hours later, multiple iterations, changing this piece out multiple times. Uh, ended up being able to, <laughs> I'm using that side on this side and this one over there. Well, will be over there. I've only done the one side so far. Um, 
but I think it's finally where it needs to be. And I have uh, uh, just my, my board for mounting everything is just sitting here for a square plane to measure my bump steer. Um, so I'm starting off with my digital level on the top two bolts. Okay, that's at zero degrees. This is pushed all the way in. And Okay, right there we are the same distance away um, on my bolts. So now if I lift it up and pin it into place, or block it into place. Okay, now we have to reset our level. Zero degrees right there. And this was the hard part. So I think I'm actually gonna try it with the caliper this time. Okay, it is eight thousandths difference. And it's going toe in when it goes up. Now that is from full droop to full compress. I would say that that is pretty darn close. Most vehicles are gonna have maybe a degree. They're, they're all, you're always shooting for zero. Um, I don't know what that is in an actual degree. It's definitely less than one, I would say. Uh, it, it's not enough that you can visually see it move. So I am quite happy with that but wow did that take a lot longer than i thought and this had to be in a significantly different position than i originally thought as well All right, so I think I've done what I can for now. Um, unfortunately, I'm waiting on the splined coupler so I can weld a sprocket to that. Uh, you guys saw I made this little piece um, and welded a sprocket onto there. And that's gonna go right about there. So this little chain is gonna go between here. And this whole assembly is going to weld in place between the two frame rails. And then if I end up having to put a couple of little braces to the middle or something, easy enough to add. Um, yeah, that's, that's my basic steering system. Yeah, something, something kind of like that anyways. Um, you can see what this hole is for here. It's for my coolant line. Uh, now my one major issue with this, I cannot currently fit the boots on. Um, <laughs> I didn't really think too far in advance. I didn't think these would be that much of, of a, that much of an issue, uh, but they scrunch up so much that it actually won't pull past 
the steel. Um, so I have a couple of options. I can either not run a boot, which in a sealed engine bay may not pose too much of an issue, especially for, you know, a summer nice day kind of a vehicle. Um, or I can do a bunch of cutting on both sides and then, you know, maybe weld in a, a little more reinforcement than I was planning on doing. And that would allow me to run the boots on both sides. I ended up changing my mind right away and I did cut out enough for, for the uh, rubber here. Um, this is quarter inch plate, so it is quite strong, but I also added in this bar, which is right uh, along the seam of my ducting. Uh, so that'll give me a nice flat surface to mount the duct portion as well as the flat bottom going back. And then I can also brace off of this onto here. All right, well, no real surprise here, but I just about had to start completely from scratch again. Um, I didn't take into account how much that uh, the under tray curves up for the ducting. So it would have hit pretty much all the way along. So I had to cut out, uh, I think it was inch and a half out of the entire bottom. And which meant I had to move the bearings um, to this position, which isn't as good for, you know, the sliding portion, but the chain's already pre-stretched, so I shouldn't have to ever really adjust it once I get it into place. Uh, locking washers on both sides plus locking nut. Um, but I had to also move everything to the back side so that it's now on the opposite side of this plate. And yeah, so I have the rubbers on there and it fits in there nicely. I think when it's turned all the way left, I'm actually going, no, sorry, turned right. Actually gonna have enough room where the rubber's not gonna melt, hopefully. It's still a decent, decent amount away from there. Um, I mean, everything moves really smoothly, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it sits right now. All right, uh, I think it's two days later since the last thing you saw. Um, got all the pieces made. Uh, I made some little spacers on the ends of here to zip tie the small end on. Um, up here it was a little bit too tight. It was actually squishing the, the rubber a little bit when you went all the way lock to lock. So I made those little spacers. Uh, I had to lengthen this shaft by three quarters of an inch. Um, then I got the other side tapped uh, for the mounts on the spindle. And I got the uh, tie rods tacked on as well. So as a function, it seems to work really nice. Um, I haven't gone really far in to see how the bump steer is yet, but if uh, my earlier tests are any indication, it looks like there's virtually none. So hopefully both sides work out that way. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. That was uh, <laughs> not an easy task. I'm already a week and a half into this. And it's finally looking like it's done correctly and that it's going to work. So my next step, um, hopefully I get this sprocket soon. Summit seems to be not shipping it apparently. They just haven't sent me an email for it yet. So when I do get this spline coupler, I'll machine it down to fit the other sprocket and then get a chain on there. And hopefully, hopefully 
I clear this, uh, the chain with this, with my header, because it is, there's the one spot right when it passes underneath that it looks like it's going to be darn close. So hopefully it does end up clearing. Um, I have to take just a sliver out of this part. Um, not sure if you can see it, but I have a washer under this side to make it at the right height, just for testing. So I'm going to take thickness of a washer out here and remove that washer and it'll drop down. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy. That's going to work nicely. And now I can go out that way and then go up and try to figure out the rest of that. Probably much later down the line. Uh, waiting on a bunch of parts for that and just not, uh, not ready for that part yet. So got a massive mess to clean up, tons of grinding, machine work, you know, all that junk and it's made a heck of a mess around here. So I got to clean up that stuff and within the next couple of days I should be getting back the hub parts for the front sprocket. Um, then we can get a drive shaft and figure out exactly where the rear trans is mounted. Once the rear trans is mounted, then I can do all the rear suspension. And then it's starting to look a lot more like a car, I guess. Uh, so that's where we're at. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was extremely difficult to do. It's taken a lot of time to get it so that I have, you know, functioning steering. Minus a few little pieces that still need to be buttoned up. But uh, yeah, if you guys haven't already, please hit the like and subscribe button and we'll see you guys next week.